Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now one of the things that I really love since beginning this channel is helping you chaps in improving your personal circumstances through style, through uh, self-development or any of the other topics that we discuss here on the channel. And I love to get a question and let me just say chaps if you're out there now and you would like to ask me a question to get my observations in return don't hesitate right send me an email you'll find my email address in the about section on the main YouTube page but today I have received a message from somebody who uses the name hungry hubby and he's very generously said this is the this site is the best site to learn how to dress well for the average man. And this gentleman lives in the Northwest United States state of Washington. And, is a, and he says, I am about to improve my dress substantially. I already have some of the clothes, but I'm upgrading my overcoat, shoes, pocket squares, hat, pants, based on the excellent suggestions I find on this site. I really need the advice and appreciate it greatly. Well, firstly, can I say it is great to hear from you and it is great to learn, hungry hubby, that you are about to embark on a journey of sartorial splendor, which at the end will see you as an intentionally well-dressed man. And let us not forget that that is quite a consequential result because you will find that your own self-esteem will be boosted. You know, you'll feel better about yourself when you take more effort in the way that you dress. I mean, I don't think any of us out there uh, have been in or have not been in the situation where perhaps we're going to a family event. Maybe we're going to a, a works function and we get all dressed up. We put a, a, you know, a dinner jacket on or a suit and tie and you feel like a million dollars or a million pounds, depends where you live. But your self-esteem will be boosted. Your confidence will be flying high. And when you go to that event, you know, you will, you will take on a different persona because of the way that you feel you look, the image that you project to the world. And that all lies in store for you when you invest in a better sartorial outlook for yourself in the world. The other thing you will find happening, aside from your own boost in self-esteem, of course, is the fact that the world would treat you differently. You know, I always have a bit of a wry smile when I go into a store or I, I go into a sort of, you know, a anywhere professional situation. And because I'm dressed well, because I'm normally the only man in the room wearing a tie or a jacket and tie, um, you get special attention from people. You know, people will call you sir when on any other day, they'll ignore you, or they will hold a door open for you, or ask if they can help you in any way. And the reason why I have a wry smile is because normally, if I go into those stores more casually dressed, you know, you are invisible. But just by adding a few carefully selected quality items of clothing to your ensemble, suddenly, you become a bit of a movie star. And I really like that, I, I always find it, um, something which brings me a little bit of joy and is something important about the power of dressing well. So let us start with answering your question. And the first thing I should point out is whenever we're selecting clothing, we always have to give a thought to the environment in which you know, we're gonna live. And I noticed from your question that you're from uh, the Northwest in the US, uh, from Washington. Now I've had the great pleasure of visiting Washington State a number of years ago, flew into Saint, uh, Seattle, spent a bit of time there, went into the, uh, the rainforest, spent a bit of time there tracking through the rainforests in that part of the world. What a spectacular state. But one of the things which uh, rings in my memory is that it is absolutely one of those parts of the world, much like here in the UK, where you genuinely get four seasons per year. You know, you will get snow, probably quite substantial snow right there on the border with Canada. Um, you will get quite warm and balmy summer times, which was evidenced by the lush greenery of the countryside uh, that I witnessed in Washington state. So you have to consider that when you're embarking upon buying that wardrobe, because you've got to think, you know, for the summer months where it's warm and hot, you will be looking perhaps for linen jackets, maybe a linen suit, maybe some, 
you know, linen shirts or certainly cotton, which are going to be the right material for the environment that you find yourself in. But then in, you know, those autumns or fall seasons, as you like to call it there, and your winter season, you know, you are going to have the advantage of of having within your wardrobe, you know, tweeds perhaps, or in the coolest time of the year, overcoats, cashmere, woolens, all of those wonderful things which make life so snugly and pleasant for those of us who live in environments where we do see cooler times of year. So like I said, it's going to be a great experience uh, buying or building that wardrobe and also wearing it because not only is it about looking different, about demonstrating to the world your style, but let's never forget function is probably the most important thing about the way we dress. And dressing more classically often means dressing more practically for the environment in which we live. So, let us embark upon my advice to you, sir. Now, my advice for anybody starting out in building and curating a new wardrobe of classic clothes is high-low dressing. Now, I've always intended to do a full video on this, but today it's just going to be the backbone of the advice that I intend to give you, hungry hubby. Because at the beginning, you can't go out and buy a whole fancy wardrobe of expensive, classic gentleman's items. You're going to have to invest in a few signature pieces, which are going to lift and elevate the other items that you have in your wardrobe, which will likely be somewhat less expensive. Now, the concept of high-low dressing is relatively straightforward, um, and I exhibit it almost every day. So the idea, the key principle of it, is that you invest in a small number of very good quality items, which when combined with an overall outfit, so say, for instance, I'll give you an example. Say you're wearing uh, a pair of cheap jeans or cheap chino trousers. You're wearing a cheap shirt, but you couple that with a pair of nice shoes, which will draw the eye, will lift the overall level of the clothing that you're wearing. That's high-low dressing, and you can apply it to any item of clothing that you wear, as long as the lift which is achieved from that item that you're wearing is sufficient to raise the temperature of the entire ensemble of clothing that you're wearing. So I'll give you a few examples. I've written a few down. Firstly, I've already kind of said it, it's the shoes, right? Shoes are always worth the extra attention and the extra investment because they have a disproportionate impact on the way that you demonstrate your style to the world. I mean, you, we've all heard the expression, when you first meet somebody, you know, you draw an inference upon the way that they are by the standard of their shoes. You know, everybody's grandmother has always said to you, look at their shoes and you look inside the soul of a stranger. Well, I won't perhaps go that far, but certainly when you meet somebody for the first time, if you see that their shoes are of good quality, and even perhaps more importantly, well maintained and have got a good shine on them, it gives you a good idea about the standards which are generally set by this person that you're just meeting. So I always say to people, invest as much as you reasonably can in your shoes or boots, right? And living in Washington as you do, you could easily invest in a good pair of boots which will cover you for the whole, you know, situations that you may find yourself in. But try not to pinch the pennies when it comes to shoes or boots because they're going to make a lot of difference. And don't forget, you know, you don't have to spend the earth. You can buy pre-owned. You can buy from eBay. I buy the majority of my footwear from eBay because I get some amazing deals and I get to wear the highest quality footwear at a fraction of their retail prices. I've got no quibbles about buying pre-owned in footwear and you shouldn't too if you want to get the best value for money. So, you know, invest what you can and don't be hobbled by the fact that shoes are very expensive. Learn a bit more about them. You know, look into the differences between Goodyear welted, Blake welted shoes. Understand what's the best and what's going to suit your situation. Then invest accordingly. The other thing I would always suggest people put their money into when they're starting off buying a classic wardrobe is 
a sports jacket or some sort of sports coat, maybe even a blazer, because just buying one tweed jacket of good quality uh, in a good usable colour range is going to provide you the opportunity to stand apart from everybody else. I mean, particularly at the moment, because we're living in a time where there's been a general casualization of the way that people dress. And if you look at a group of men in a bar, 10 men, you might be lucky if one of them is wearing a sports jacket or a blazer of some kind. And immediately they will stand out from the crowd. They will look like the leader of that group, the boss of that group, because that classic structured jacket not only makes you stand out as a smarter person, but it accentuates the positivities of your physique. So a structured jacket will make your shoulders look broader. It will make your waist look narrower. It will make you look like a better version of yourself, particularly if you have it tailored to fit well. So always invest in a sports jacket or a blazer of some kind. And again, pre-owned, used market, you don't have to fire a load of money into this. The other thing I would say, living in Washington as you do, um, you're gonna need a good outer coat for the winter. Now in this era, everybody is wearing puffer jackets and they're wearing you know, Gore-Tex weatherproof garments and they're all well and good. I own those, of course I do, and I use them uh, you know, when I'm facing extreme environments. But for the majority of the time, when I'm transiting between my car and an office or walking around wanting to look my best, I will opt for one of the more classic winter options. Now typically I live, obviously as you can see, in a rural environment. So my daily, my perennial uh, outer garment is a barber wax jacket, simply because it's classic, it's elegant, it's stylish, and it actually does the job rather well. Now, if I was a city guy, I would be opting for an overcoat all day long, because I actually like the long uh, look of the jacket. It, makes, it, it elongates one's height, it makes you look uh, taller, it makes you look slimmer if you pick a darker colour. They extend normally beyond the knee, so it is actually really warm. And if you buy one which is made of cashmere or wool or a blend of both, you will have a garment which will keep you snugly and warm, looking fantastic, and it's going to last for many, many years. And a lot of people say, well, I don't invest in an overcoat because you can only wear them in limited situations. I would put that thought out of your mind because an overcoat is a much more versatile garment than most people give it credit for. It can, of course, be worn with a pair of jeans. It can be worn with chinos or other slacks. And equally, it can be worn with a suit or that sports jacket that you've already bought. It is the perfect outer garment and it immediately cuts you out from the crowd as a classically elegant gentleman. Uh, accessories. Now these little things on the periphery which make all the difference. A hat, for instance. All right, most men these days, if they wear a hat at all, it'll be a baseball cap or a woolen beanie cap. Make the difference. Buy yourself something which sets you apart. Maybe a trilby, a fedora. If you wanna go nuts, go for a bowler hat or a Homburg hat. If you want to be a bit more of the middle ground, you can have a flat cap or a newsboy cap. But all of these options really do add a bit of class to your look. When everybody else is wearing a baseball cap, step out from the crowd. A trilby is entirely cool, and it's something which I rock all the time in the winter, particularly if you're wearing that overcoat. They go very much hand in hand. Curate for yourself a small collection of pocket squares and ties that you can wear with that sports jacket, uh, you know, in the in the in the in the breast pocket, or uh, with your shirt. Just a few ties. If you're not a, a very co uh, often wear a tie, just get a little collection of about four or five. You need not spend a lot of money. I've been buying up loads off eBay lately as the tie has fallen into sort of lack of use, and I've been able to buy some amazing, uh, you know, handmade silk ties from brands like Dunhill, Turnbull and Asser and I've been paying £2.50, £4, for ties which should cost £80 to £100 if I bought them at retail price. It's because they've been owned, but I mean, a tie doesn't get a difficult life. You can buy a tie for next to nothing. And the same goes for pocket squares. And if you've got no spare money to buy a pocket square, you can make some. 
if you've got an old shirt that you're about to throw away or an old set of curtains that are about to go in the bin cut yourself a little square out if it's got a pattern stick it in your pocket square nobody is going to know that that isn't a pocket square that you've bought from a high-end store all they can see is a small bit of the fabric and if you can't even do that use nothing less than a white linen or a cotton handkerchief and just have a white pocket square it's good to go with anything so there we go hungry hubby a good suggestion of how you can employ high low dressing to help you as you begin your journey as an intentionally well-dressed man you need not go out and spend a fortune you can actually do it incrementally and if you buy just a small number of signature items and employ them within your your ensemble of clothing strategically you will stand out from the crowd you will be smart you will cut a dash as you walk the highways and byways of Washington there in the Pacific Northwest so get out and do it and let me know how you get on in fact send me some photos and we will feature them on the am I a chap series to just show how well you've done the job so on that note folks thank you very much for listening today I hope you found it useful if you have a question for me send it on in put it into the comments or send me an email I will be delighted to hear from you and if you'd like to give me a thumbs up on this video it would help me too if you'd like to see more material like this go and click that red subscribe button and if you'd like to practically support the channel the easiest way to do it is to just buy me a coffee and you can find the link to the buy me a coffee uh, page in the show notes below so until the next time do not do not let a lack of funds or a lack of imagination hold you back from being the intentionally well-dressed man that is inside you screaming to get out you can do it and relatively inexpensively so until the next time take care and i will see you again very soon <laughs>